Good morning. <coughs> uh, few weeks ago, some um, Dharma practitioners approached me and uh, asked me to do some teaching. And then he said, don't just rest and do some teaching. And I told him I'm not so happy. And he says, he says this is a different reason. And uh, he said, some of them also <coughs> really looking for some, even short teaching, but that would be very beneficial. So he strongly asked me to do it. But I'm still very unhealthy, both physically and mentally. And, uh, but then, because of uh, my root guru, His Holiness, the Diku Kensei Ruchi, I ever remember that each and every time when He gives teaching among all of us in the future, the regardless what situation around you, but teaching wise should accept. If anybody approach you to request the performance teaching, and you should accept and do it. So I still remember such precious instruction and a word. And uh, of course, I cannot forget such Mm, the precious advice. So therefore, uh, I didn't. I don't mean that I'm qualified and a master to give a teaching. I feel still very uncomfortable when I think of a word I'm giving teaching, and you are receiving my teaching. I don't feel comfortable at all because I'm not qualified at all. I'm still on the path. I'm still going through struggling. And I'm still going through confusion. And I'm still going through all sorts of things. But I'm here for sharing some precious teachings that I have received from the great masters in the past. Although they are not the physically presented, but I'm sure they are blessing, they are compassion, their loving kindness is still very strongly existed. To make connection with the Dharma is not as simple as we believe. I'm not talking about Buddhist perspective only, but in general, all of us looking for happiness, joy, prosperity, and we all unwanted the situation of pain and suffering miseries. The besides Dharma, Buddha Dharma, we are doing all kinds of things and all sorts of things in order to, to dispel such situation, to get rid of such situation. And we are trying, and we did try, and we are trying and we will try. I'm sure none of us will give up this until we achieved our own goal and destiny. But the problem is, we don't know how to do it. We are so eager to do it, and we are so desire to do such, 
but keep failing. This means something is wrong, isn't it? Something is wrong. Something went wrong in the past, and something is wrong at the present. And I'm sure something is going to be wrong in the future. So therefore, I'm saying, as a you call teacher and sitting on chair and uh, looks like I'm giving teaching and you all believe you are master. You all believe that I'm master. You all believe that you are teacher and uh, each and every word that you are giving is from your own experience and from your own realization. But actually it's not true. So therefore, as I said earlier, I feel ashamed and I feel very embarrassing. So called I'm teaching. It's really, really disgusting if I say this. But no choice. So I'm not teaching. I am sharing the precious words that I received from great masters. Yeah? So there are lots of faults and mistakes in the teaching. If I give teaching, I'm sure all the words will be mistakes, full of a mistake, full of errors, the full of faults. I may lead you to the wrong way if I give a teaching. That's why I have brought here this precious text. I rely on the text, which means I'm still not qualified. If I'm qualified, I don't need to rely on anything else. Perfectly can give teaching from my own realization, my own insight, my own the ultimate realization, my wisdom, if I'm perfect. But I am imperfect. Therefore, I rely on still papers, the letters, so-called books, texts, whatsoever. <clears throat> so therefore, I request you not misunderstand that so-called Sanji Nyempa is on the chair, is giving teaching. I'm not teaching. I'm repeating to those teachings given by to those great masters in the past. We need to repeat until we fully enlightened anyway. Right? We are not reached the level where you can choose what you like. We are still at the level of learning, analyzing, researching, finding and try to settle. Trying still settle not settled yet. We are still floating. I'm saying, yes, that's why I'm saying I'm physically ill and mentally more ill. Yes, so it's still fine. We have to go through this. Therefore, we need practice, we need meditation, we need study, and we need thorough discussion of Buddha Dharma. Now, there are so many titles, mind training, or meditation, or cultivating bodhicitta, cultivating compassion, or cultivating wisdom, cultivating anything. There are so many titles. There are so many different teachings. The teachings from Hinayana tradition, teachings from Mahayana tradition, and the teachings from the Vajrayana. And, and each of them carries all sorts of, all different teachings. Because the Lord Buddha has performed his teaching according to the, the capacity of individuals. 
he did not perform teaching just simply out of his realization. He concerns more for the individual's capacity and the interest. So therefore, he designed all kinds of teachings. But for me, in my own case, the experience of a benefit from the practice, Kadamba teaching of Lojong, the mind training is much effective. Much, much effective. Why I'm saying here this, many years back, when I was going through the difficulties, the hard time with my illness and the sickness. And uh, the practice of the, the Lojong, the mind training teaching of Kadampa, was really very immensely affected to me. And I did really experience the benefit from this teaching. So therefore, the the mind training Lojong, Tibetan word Lojong, or the mind training teaching from Kadampa, is so simple and it's very direct. Philosophically, Madhyamika or the Vajrayana teachings, a little complicated. It's a little complicated. You need time, you need energy, and you need a full of time to go through. So it's not as simple as what you believe. But Lojong teaching, the Kadampas Lojong teaching is very direct and so simple. Yet nobody seems nobody likes it. I don't know why. And uh, Our everyday life doesn't matter monastic life or the business life or whatever the lifestyle you are. I'm sure you all to look for the joy and the happiness, right? And we all look for get rid of the suffering and the pain. And therefore, we are doing practice. The practice of Mandro, the practice of Bodhicitta, practice of refuge, the practice of whatsoever. So any activities of the virtue that you are performing by body, speech, mind, are all for the purpose of gaining the ultimate joy and happiness, and for the purpose of getting rid of or dispelling the pain and the suffering and the miseries, the unwanted situation. I'm sure, therefore, we are doing Dhamma practice, isn't it? I believe so. Dhamma practice is not something that we are accepting for the purpose of entertainment. We are not doing Dhamma practice for the purpose of enjoyment or for fun at all. We should have the wider perspective and idea why we are doing Dhamma practice. We are running from place to place, from pillar to post, and running here and there, and looking for Dhamma, looking for teaching. But when I think of myself, I have received so many teachings from the great masters in the past. I am a very lucky person, and I can be proud of that. But the problem is, did I really apply within? No. This is a very shameful situation. Therefore, I'm still going through difficulties and a hard time. That's why I'm saying I'm shameful 
sit here saying I'm teaching to you. If you think that I'm qualified master, it's wrong view and wrong belief. So, likewise, all of us, we are very much eager to receive teachings, teachings, and the teachings, and the teachings. And we are very particular on the subject also. And you need very special, like, attractive title. Then you only join the teaching. Bodhicitta, you might say, oh, I have received so many times. Refuge, you might say, oh yeah, very boring. Huh? For Noble Truth, oh yeah, I have heard so many times. It's not new for me. Maybe probably you will say that this is not for me. I am looking for some higher teaching, high standard teaching. So that sort of like kind of a complicated situation is existed in us. Therefore, we are unable to get through our difficulties in the day-to-day -day life. Does not mean the teaching does not really work with us. Teaching is so precious. It's immensely, incredibly, amazingly, it's really precious. It's nothing to do with the teaching, nothing to do with those great masters. It is something to do with the individual themselves. Lack of confidence, lack of wisdom, lack of diligence, lack of continuity, and the lack of anything. Right? I think so. So therefore, since the situation is okay around me, I'm not starving and I'm not thirsty, and I don't have a problem. So I almost have forgotten the Dhamma and the teaching. And when I get trouble, problem, physically illness, mentally illness, difficulties, then remember Dhamma. It's too late. It's not the proper way that you apply Dhamma with it. The Buddha Dhamma is our daily life. Food, water, cloth. We need everyday life. Likewise, the Dharma teaching, Dharma practice, but the Dharma is likewise. So, and uh, situation is like. As a teacher, as a student, there is no connection. And there is no connection between individuals and the Buddha Dhamma. How do we have connection with the Buddha Dhamma? We pray to Buddha, we pray to Dhamma, we pray to Sangha, and we pray to deities, and we pray to Dhamma protectors. We call, I am making connection. Right? How do you do? The connection can be made only once you realize who you are. Only the time that you are able to settle to your mind and everything seems very clear to you, what is Buddha Dhamma, then only you can make a connection towards the Dhamma, towards the Buddha, towards the deities. Simply you are kneeing down and begging their blessing protection, yet your attitude and your behavior is totally against the Buddha Dhamma. How can we get the protection and the blessing from them at all? Does not mean they don't want to give blessing to us, but the problem is the principle. There is no principle to make connection. To to make a connection with the Buddha Dhamma is not as simple as what you thought. Just simply doing meditation, simply reciting some mantras, the simply visualizing some deities, and the simply making an uh, image of a Buddha or the deities. Does this mean 
we are making connection with them? No, absolutely no. Absolutely no. Making connection through devotion, through confidence, through determination. Without determination, without confidence, without devotion towards the reality, not not connection, simply making connection with the deities of Buddha, Dhamma, through the image cannot, cannot. Reality, the reality is the something that phenomenon existed within, always does not change regardless whether you are defiled or undefiled or you are freed or not freed that regardless those situations you are innately you are principally or primarily you are always free from them therefore the teaching Buddha Dhamma is working with us if we are primarily deluded our mind or disturbed permanently by those the defilements or obscurations then the one we apply Buddha Dhamma within we get nothing eventually cannot just wasting your time just wasting our energy and just wasting our time so, believing such phenomena is existed within us purely and never touched by those so-called negativities. Primarily or principally, fundamentally, we are pure. Our life is so simple, but we are the one who make complicated. My life simple. Nobody makes my life complicated. I make complicated. Same? same? No? I cannot blame on anyone. I cannot. We do blame. Yes, we do blame. I do. I blame on you. I blame on him. Or I blame on her. Or I blame anybody. I can blame on anybody. But this is very illogical. If you really look at if you really look at the, the reality, I should blame on myself. I should blame on myself. That's what Buddha says. That's what Kadamba Masters says. Kadamba Masters are so kind. Why they are so kind? Does not mean they are just because of the practitioner. Does not mean because they are just being so humble. They have ultimate wisdom. Through this wisdom, they have realized what is wrong and what is right. They are the supreme and the highest judge, can see through the right and the wrong. Right? So therefore, what I'm trying to say here is, we talk about mind training. This is a very interesting title mind training, Tibetan word ka, no, no, lo, jong. Lo means intelligence also. Lo could be meant mind. Lo could be meant the, the mind of wisdom. Yeah. It carries the different meaning, so it's up to you. If you are going through a difficult time, then you better accept the law as a just a delusive, illus illusory mind. If you are okay level, okay, the mind of wisdom. If you are trainer, then you should say the mind of training, training of the mind. Jong also has different meaning. Jong means training, train. Jong could be meant the process, processing. Jong could be means apply. Jong could be meant utilize. So the Tibetan 
word is very profound. So, but simply, today we talk about Lojong is just simply the training our mind. Masters also need to train their mind. And the student also need the train need to train the mind. <coughs> so therefore, the title is the training of the training of our mind or mind training. Lojong. It's a every practice from Hinayana. The day you are taking refuge vow, the cut piece of your hair, right? What does it mean? This is the time for you starting the lojong practice. And the shaving your hair and the beard also the sign of training of your mind. That's the very much a systematic in the process of the uh, thorough learning or thorough studying in the Theravada tradition. Symbols, it is called symbol. We need symbol. In the Vajrayana also, they are giving a lot of symbols. The Damaru, the bell, the Vajra, the vase, Mala, and the Mandala, syllables, letters, are all symbols. Because we are still lacking the wisdom that can be directly realized the ultimate meaning of the Vajrayana practice. Therefore, as a skillful means, they have designed as a symbol processes, the symbolic processes, giving all kinds of symbols. Through these symbols, they let you realize, they let you understand the ultimate, the true nature. It's high tech. Yes. So, therefore, and the Theravada tradition also same. Changing clothes, shaving hair, beard, all are just a symbol. It carries something, the ultimate meaning behind doing all this. Whereas Kadamba teaching is very direct. If you are wrong, the teaching says you are wrong. If you are right, the teaching says you are right. If you are doing not good, and the teaching is very direct, says you are doing not good. It does not go a big round and come back to you. It just goes straight to you. Therefore, Kadamba's teaching is very simple and very direct. But sometimes, true direct teaching also you don't like, right? Yes, many of them complain. So, very difficult to deal with the human being actually. It's very difficult. I always used to say like cows, very easy to deal with them. Give some grass and let them have a water and then try to calm them down and uh, let them rest at the lake side or the river bank side. Okay, calmly and the chewing and the resting. But the human keep complaining. If we do have and we are more greedy, never satisfied, and we keep complaining. And we don't have also complain. And we have also complain. Never end our complaint. And we have more and more and more complain. And we don't have and more complain. It's so difficult. And the teaching also. If we give, if we if we study the Theravada practice, and you might say after a few weeks, it's very boring. And a Mahayana, and you would say, oh, this is not at my level. And a Vajrayana, and you might say, oh, this is too fast. I need slow path. When I give, when someone give a slow path teaching, and you may say, it's too slow. So therefore, it's very difficult to adjust the teaching, because too much demanding. So therefore, it's so difficult to deal with the human being. Unfortunately, and um, so therefore, 
The Kadamba teacher, teachers, like Atisha, is the main master. And uh, their main practice is compassion and wisdom. Compassion. Tibetan word, Inje. I don't know English word, compassion. is how far true is Inje. But actually, Ying Jie means the, the, the Ying means the heart, Jie means the Lord, so the, the Lord heart. Right? Tibetan word like that. Ying is a heart, Jie means the Lord or leader or boss. So therefore, the Lord heart means special heart. Special heart, Ningje. When we talk about the Ningje practice, one should completely forget yourself. You are totally here for the purpose of others. For this, we need determination. So, without the determination, one cannot work for others. So therefore, Katampas, the main teaching is the Ningji and Shiro, the wisdom. So today, I'm going to the recite or repeat the eight verses from the Langri Tampa, the great master in Katampa. Only eight verses, only. Eight verses, but these eight verses carry the entire teaching of the Buddha, Theravada teaching, Mahayana teaching, the Vajrayana teachings. It's a very essential teaching and very effective. In this degeneration time, this teaching is more suitable, more suitable. We need this kind of thing. Very direct. If you are able to afford, take it. If we cannot, just give it up. That's it. So simple. There is no trick at all. It's very direct. And some teachings has some teachings do have a trick. You can call it tricky teaching, which means you cannot catch up. What does it mean? Because in one hand say something, on the other hand it could be meant something else. So therefore, you can call it tricky teaching from tricky teacher. I'm tricky, yes. I'm a tricky person. So I repeat first in Tibetan verses as a oral transmission. I cannot. Say it directly in English because I don't have an English translation. So therefore, I must depend on the Tibetan words first as an oral transmission. Dhani simyen tamjila, yijin nuru chen hape, tunjo tube sambai tado jiban zimba show. With the determination to accomplish. The highest welfare of all sentient beings who excel even the wish fulfilling jewel, may I at all times hold them dear. Which means determination. Yeah? Determination is so important. Determination with doing anything for myself. Once you are able to do it, and then you are very determined to do with others. So I have to prepare for myself first. That's why I'm saying I'm not qualified. It's so simple when I repeat these precious teachings, right? isn't it? So simple. I repeat, and I can make up so beautifully and nicely. I can make it much more attractive. 
than the, the ordinate, uh, original the, uh, verses. You, you could say, wow, what a wonderful. That is not nice. That is not the way that the benefit others. You call modernize. Teaching cannot be modernized at all. Style, yes, a little bit different can be performed. But basic teaching always must base on origin. Cannot modernize at all. If you modernize the teaching, and you have to modernize the blessing also, and then you have to modernize the transmission, and then the whole system you need to be modernized. In this case, then the, the blessing of lineage is gone. Is it totally gone? No. If the blessing is gone, where is connection? Where is connection? We can't find the connection. Connection towards the Buddha Dharma is through the devotion. And the determination here says, with the determination to accomplish the highest welfare of sentient beings is not easy responsibility. It's very heavy responsibility. Day to day of our life, we must examine, am I doing right or wrong? It's so simple and easy to look at others. He or she is doing wrong. He or she is doing right. He or she is doing bad. He or she is doing good. I can criticize others. And I can accuse others. So simple. This is most simple, the most easiest way. It's so easy to come, to come, to, to complain, to accuse, to, to criticize, to, to shout at others. It's so simple. But someone shout at you, then what do you feel? And if someone accuse you, then what do you feel? Right? So therefore, it's not so easy to, to, to express that I am Buddhist, or I am practitioner, or I am follower of a Buddha. It's not nice. Right? If you are serious practitioner, if you are really serious practitioner, then the, in our daily life, I must examine my own attitude instead of examine others' attitude. Three attitudes, physical attitude, verbal attitude, and mental attitude. Among these three, the more serious is mental attitude. Why? Because nobody can see it. You can see it only. Physical attitude people can define in different ways. Say, this is a right attitude. This is a wrong attitude. You are wrong attitude. You got wrong attitude. You got right attitude. Your attitude is not good. Your attitude is terrible. You are selfish. You are what? Blah, 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 whatever. You can count the innumerable number of accusation. Right? So therefore, if you are really, really serious practitioner, then our ultimate responsibility is to examine my own mental attitude. Masters are not stupid. They are the wise men. They are very wise. We are stupid. We are still followed on my own, the negative imprint and habitual tendencies. Don't want to give them up, right? We are very much enjoying with it from day to day, the life, the pain, suffering, the frustration, miseries. We enjoy, right? So therefore, we don't want to practice seriously. We just choose practice as for the sake of fun, just for fun. Fun, we go Gora for fun. We recite mantra for fun. We attend the teaching for the fun. Or maybe 
for the curiosity, right? Or maybe for the general knowledge. So if you are wise, or if we are wise, must not forget the primary, the reason and the purpose, the fundamental purpose and the reason why we are doing Dharma practice. Why we are so dedicated our life for the purpose of the benefiting sentient beings. Everything has its own reason. Without reason, nobody does anything. We do everything with the reason. But Buddha Dhamma, the reason with the Buddha Dhamma is much more, much more, uh, what I call the extensive. So therefore, here it says, the determination is so important. Your mind is not settled yet. Our mind is not settled yet. Because we cannot remain, we are unable to remain in one teaching. We jump from here to there, right to the left, front to the back. And you started one teaching, not completed, and you go to the next. And you, you go for that, but haven't completed, and then you choose another one. So it's like we are traveling in shopping centers. From shopping center to shopping centers. Eventually you can't get anything, and you ended up with the tightness and a fed up. So this is our way of life with the Dhamma practice. I, d I don't mean that really uh, well I cannot make up in the teaching like a beautiful way and a nicely that I don't want to hurt you feeling and I want to really make you happy so I cannot really give teaching like I cannot really uh, do like this according to your smile or your long face whatever so but teaching should be performed on the principle based of the principle Right. So, therefore, it says here, in order to benefit sentient beings, then we have to cherish the sentient beings. In order to cherish other sentient beings, and then we have to get ready to accept every situation. Any situation that comes to you, we should accept as it is. If you are too particular with that, those situations, that means you are not determined as yet in your practice. So to be determined, which means you are totally giving up any situation that comes to you, Make sure those situations do not make changes. I should make change myself from within, not from the external factors. I cannot fulfill your wish at all, simply, really, isn't it? There are 10 people around, for example. Each of them have, has their own interest and the demand. I cannot fulfill all of them. As a teaching, it's very general, regardless you like it or not, but this is the fact, the principle. So the Kadamba's teaching you see here, others are more valuable or more precious than myself. You see how profound. Is it, is it simple to think of such thing that you are more important than me? Well, how am I stupid? No, I'm more important than you. In the common sense, isn't it? If you say, oh, you are more important than me, they might see something wrong. You better see a psychiatrist. But in the practice, yes, it's very true. Because without sentient beings, I cannot do practice. Without sentient beings, I cannot practice six parameters. 
Without sentient beings, I cannot do practice bodhicitta. Without sentient beings, I cannot do any practice by body, speech, mind. Eventually, to be enlightened also comes from others, not from myself. Forget about the ultimate enlightenment, but in this simple life, like we need shelter, food, clothing, yeah? many things also depend on others. Without others, cannot. Even my reputation is come from others. Those famous and those are famous singers and also the film actors, the actresses, or whatever, are all famous because of others. The people make famous, not yourself make famous. So therefore, every single joy, every single happiness, prosperity is primarily come from others, not from within. Therefore, this conventional life, we are very much dependent on others. So therefore, we need to cherish them. Ultimate enlightenment is come from others also. Compassion, loving kindness, wisdom, every practice. So without sentient beings, we cannot practice, isn't it? So the Kadamba masters are so wise, they knew that without sentient beings, we cannot practice. Therefore, sentient beings are more precious than myself. Why it says here, may I at all times hold them dear, at all times. At all time means always, isn't it? Always. From now onward until fully enlightened. Always. Which means that regardless whether they make you unhappy or they make you happy or they make you restless. Whatever situation, the regardless. One must not forget the principle and the primary should consider the sentient beings are totally great kind, as kind as the Buddha. Shantideva says in the Bodhisattva Jaya Avatara, to be enlightened, the kindness wise is totally equal between Buddha and the sentient beings. So without a Buddha, we cannot do practice. And then if we do not, if we are unable to do practice, we cannot be enlightened. Likewise, without ascension beings, we cannot practice. If we cannot practice, then we cannot be enlightened. <coughs> so therefore, the, from the kindness, from the kindness wise, it's totally equal the between Buddha and ascension beings. So, in order to cherish others more important than the mind, <coughs> one should see that our own anger, jealousy, hatred are the source of unwanted situations, right? Anger is much more worse than the, any other afflictive emotions. Shantideva says, attachment can bring some joy and happiness in certain cases. In certain cases, not always. Yeah? Shantideva is a very wise man also. He says, certain cases. Whereas, whereas anger never bring joy to yourself and to others. So, we claim that we are Mahayana practitioner. Every morning you recite Sangji Chu Dan Sokji Chu Nanga, right? And you say, I'm generating bodhicitta, compassion. To whom? You say, all sentient beings. And when you say all sentient beings, 
does your enemy include it? Then you think, maybe not. Let me check. No, something like that. So it's very fragile, our practice of compassion. It's so simple. When you shut the door and the window, nobody disturbs you at home. Very simple, all such beings. But when you are outside, someone criticizes you. No, this criticizer is not included in sentient beings to you. Right? So you see, there is something wrong, isn't it? Something really wrong. I myself say, I cannot. To be honest, really, I cannot, I cannot say all sentient beings are, you know, as an object to generate my bodhicitta, no. When I think someone who doesn't like me, I feel a little bit sour. And I don't want to include in sentient beings. Yes. It's very simple. You see, that means something is wrong in our practice. But great masters, they say from their experience, from their realization, very honest person, very honest, wise master. Honesty means what you say is from your heart. If you say you are dishonest, means you say it, but it's not from your heart. Right? So this dishonest. So they are honest. Why? Whatever practice they have done is they, they utilize the practice and the individual. There is no separate between practice and themselves. Themselves become practice. Practice become themselves. There is no two separate phenomena. So therefore, every action of the body, speech and mind, come from them is the instruction. Their movement is also the teaching, also instruction. Every single word from them are instruction. Because they are ultimate, honest, wise master. I'm not. I'm not an honest person. Yes. So I have to clarify this such thing. No? <clears throat> so therefore, taktu, Tibetan word taktu means always, at all times, that regardless of what situation, you are happy <coughs> or unhappy, doesn't really matter. You have to cherish or you have to hold those sentient beings until fully enlightened must not change your mood, should not perform teaching practice according to your mood. Your mood is on and off, but practice cannot be on and off, should carry. In fact, the more we get problem, the more we have to practice. That's the only option. Cannot be solved the problem with anything else. Second verse. Kandu Sudan Robese, Dani Wille Mentashin, Shana Samba Tawai, Cholo Jebel Zimbusho. Wherever I integrate or associate with others, may I think of myself as the <coughs> lowest of all and from the depth of my heart hold others as supreme. This verse is carrying the meaning of to recognize my own ego. Recognition is so important Failing recognition, therefore, cannot progress our practice. It's so simple. To, it's so simple. When you look at the practice, it looks like simple. But it's difficult. As Shantideva says in Bodhisattva Chayavatara, 8th chapter, is the chapter of Samadhi. Precisely explained, saying that 
when you deal with your own negative or afflictive emotion, simply does, don't throw your emotion on them. Apply recognition at first. Recognition. So, I have to recognize first myself. When ego or anger, any negative emotion, that emotion that r make you restless, which means emotion is not good, isn't it? If any emotion that gives you joy, an ultimate joy, or stable joy, or some sense of that emotion does not give you the feeling of sour. So, we don't call this as the disturbing emotion. Disturb means that something is not right. Seemingly looks sweet, nice, but after some time it leads to different direction or it gives you a pain and a suffering, which means this emotion is disturbing emotion. So, now it, it, we, talking, we talk about pride. Yeah? We say, I'm a very proud person, you are a very proud person. Proud of like a philosopher, meditator, practitioner. There are so, all kinds of the pride, right? Yeah, we have all kinds of pride. If you are a good meditator, instead of helping yourself, so the ego arises and then pride arises. So this pride make you, makes you down. You think, I am a great meditator. Yeah? And if you are a great philosopher, instead of, actually when you are a great philosopher, whatever you have learned, it should help you to reduce or suppress your ego down. But instead of that, it's opposite. Because of the pride, then ego arises more. That means you did study wrongly. If you do meditation, meditation is for the purpose of the tranquilize your mind and the mental stability to produce or to establish the tran tranquility of your mind, to stabilize your mind. But instead of that, it makes more unstable your mind because pride. I'm a meditator. Nobody can compete me. Nobody can compare to me. I'm the best. I'm the super. I'm the supreme. If you hear someone is doing very good meditation, then something is arising again. Then you become sleepless. Food you eat, no taste. Because that moment you think, oh, I thought I'm the best, but now I heard someone is doing better than me. I hope it is not true. Or you pray that his or her meditation go down. May his meditation go down. May something disturb his meditation, if it is true. If it is not true, then you would say, see, nobody can compare to me. So that sort of, you know, this is a very obvious if you are not careful in the Dharma practice. I believe myself, like, I'm very diligent, okay. I didn't mean that I'm diligent, but given, for giving example, giving example, if I do practice like seven hours, six hours, eight hours per day, then I believe myself best practitioner. Yeah? Are you thinking that? But then what I did in these six hours, in these seven hours, what did I do? You just keep chanting, recite, reciting mantras, and chanting the prayers. Did I really look at my ego? No, not really. So this shows your practice is weak. You really didn't do good practice at all. I didn't do practice at all. Well, yeah. 
I can stay late, like maybe 10, or 10, 10 o'clock until 11 o'clock or midnight, 12 o'clock. Let's say I'm chanting, I'm reciting mantra, I'm doing prostration, or I'm doing circumambulation, kora, or I'm doing all sorts of things. But when I look at my ego, does it really change? You have been practiced maybe says one year, two years, three years, or maybe ten years. Did you ever notice that your ego really gone down, or did you see any changes? So far, not. I hope maybe sooner or later. You see, this means wasting time. So, therefore, Kadampa masters. Tell us, be wise when you do practice. We are working with our own mind, not simply the physical and the verbal discipline alone. We need discipline. Yes, true. So dedicated with the practice, and we need discipline and morality. Every practice we perform on the grounds of morality and this discipline. True, but discipline is for the purpose of what? We must not forget is to tame our mind, to walk with our mind, to walk with our mental attitude. I have to notice my mental attitude. I have to examine my mental attitude. Each and every time I do practice, my duty, my responsibility is to be checked my attitude thoroughly and precisely. This is our primary responsibility to be applied each and every session you do. Why I'm saying I'm a lowest and you are highest does not mean position. Because maybe you are educated, I'm not educated. That's why I'm a lower or you are high? No. You are rich, therefore you are high, and I'm not rich, poor, therefore I'm a lord. No, we are not talking about these things at all here. Why I'm saying, or Kadamba Master says, that you should think that you are lowest person, they are highest. Regardless, the fault and the mistake is existed within them or myself, doesn't really matter. Those situations should be regardless. Now, the main point is here that I'm working with my ego, isn't it? My main enemy is, the enemy is an ego, anger. This is the ultimate destroyer. Destroyer, ultimate destroyer. Individual you call enemy, they cannot destroy you completely at all. Never, ever. The ultimate destroyer is our own anger, own ego, which is existed within us but fell to recognize or to identify or, or to be seen. We always blame on others. Jawagwachangpa, the great master from Dubakaju. And he says, serious fault in the Dharma practitioner is failing recognition on fault and mistakes. Always blame on others is the most serious and most, yeah, he said, most, the serious, most serious fault and mistake. Which is true. If you are doing meditation, give an example. It's so simple. Doing meditation in the cave. Okay. Looks like you are alone inside the cave. Seems everything is okay with you. And you believe you are doing quite okay. What happened? If somebody at the door of a cave criticize you or talk bad things about you, I'm sure you will jump out from the cave, say that, are you criticizing me? Are you crazy? Right? Failed your practice. How long did you do practice in the cave? Seven years? In one second, you have wasted the seven years of time of your practice. That's why 
Jawa Gautama says, serious problem, serious mistake. So therefore, recognition. I should accuse myself. I should criticize myself. This is the principal practice, main practice of Kadampa masters. Kadampa masters folding their hand, requesting Dhamma practitioners, please don't blame others. Blame yourself. Blame your ego. Everything seems not going well around you is from ego, not from individuals. They are all come from within. So your ultimate enemy is your own ego. As long as ego is within you, you cannot gain the experience of joy and happiness. If you are really looking for ultimate joy and happiness, then the only option is to get rid of these unnecessary or needless phenomena, so-called ego. Is it difficult to get rid of? And the Gautama Master says, very simple. Very simple. Very easy. Why? Because they are not there. They are simply there because you are too lazy. If you get rid of your laziness, if you wake up fully, it's so easy to be recognized, to be found. When you found it, analyze it, disappears. Because it is not there inherently, never existed inherently or solidly. It's just a reflection of your negative mental attitude. As long as you walk with your ego, it's not easy. Walking with the other is so simple, isn't it? If somebody said that I give you salary, can you can you look at them, see that they, are they doing right or wrong, look after them? It's so simple. But it's so difficult to look myself. It's, it's not so easy. When you criticize others, it's so simple, really. It's so simple, so easy. That's the most easiest thing in our life. But most difficult is to to check myself, my motivation, my mental attitude, and my movement, my lifestyle. It's so difficult. Who will say that I'm wrong? Difficult. Although I'm wrong, I still try to beautifully escape from that point. Say that, oh, I was not really wrong, but, you know, it happened, something like that. Very difficult to feel sorry. You still say, I'm not wrong. This is stubborn ego. It's not easy. So, therefore, it takes time. Need more diligence. Need more hard work. So, therefore, it does not mean that I'm bringing myself down and giving chance for them to lift up, you know, so making big gap in between me. This is not the idea. Idea here is, as a serious practitioner, I think, as a serious practitioner, I cannot cheat myself. Cheating other is so simple, isn't it? I can cheat you. I can lie you. I can bring all kinds of excuse, tell you all kinds of things to make you fool. I can fool you around. It's so simple. But as a practitioner, one must not do that. You can do this life, but you cannot do the next. Ultimate judge is there still. Right? So, as a Dharma practitioner, you put up the image of a Buddha in your altar, and you put up the precious teachings of a Buddha in the altar, and you are doing prostration there, and light up the lamps, and offering the bowls of the water whatsoever. This is a sign of that you are really a follower of a Buddha. This is not enough. You should change attitude. Without changing attitude, simply following the discipline is not sufficient at all. 
this cannot bring ultimate joy or ultimate victory to you at all. Therefore, the best method, the best key point here is, as a Kadampa's teaching, to check myself. Don't check others. It's not the time for you to check others. Your responsibility, my responsibility is to examine myself. Am I doing right or wrong? Am I really following the, the teachings of the Buddha? Am I really doing right things? Am I really serious in my practice? Am I really honest with my practice? So this is our daily responsibility to deal with our practice, to walk with our practice. Meeting up great masters is not so important. They can't do anything. What they can do? No. You just request, can you give me blessing? Okay. Maybe they will touch their hand your head or maybe something, I don't know, whatever, or give you some pills or water, so-called blessing. You drink it, you eat it, can this really change your ego? I hope so. But so far not. I haven't heard of this. So, change should be met within through applying those precious teachings. We hear and put it in the heart. We call this as practice. It's so simple, but we don't do. Why we don't do? Because of the negative or habitual tendency. From the beginning of the time, in one single life, many negative imprint in our life, which is very difficult to be given up. But this one is from the beginning of the time. We are so used to with it. If we change it, we feel something uncomfortable. Therefore, we don't want to give it up. But practitioners, great masters, they are so wise. You have only one option. Without giving up them, no way to be liberated. So, two options. You want liberate or don't want. That's it. Don't want? Okay, no botheration. Just do what you like. But if you are really looking for ultimate joy, then there's only one option. To be to change. Therefore, they are high, they are low. In the other hand, and it is very true, they are high because without them I cannot enlighten them, isn't it? So therefore they are high, I'm lower. Without sentient beings, I cannot cultivate bodhicitta, I cannot cultivate compassion, I cannot cultivate loving kindness, I cannot cultivate any Mahayana, the perfect attitude. Generosity, discipline, patience, diligence, samadhi, and a concentrative meditation, and the wisdom, are all come from sentient beings. Without sentient beings, none of them can be arising, can be cultivating. Therefore, they are high, absolutely. That's the truth. Therefore, I'm lower. So, they are, so with this kind of exercise, you know, mental exercise, training exercise, one should slowly can, should change the attitude. Otherwise, we keep attend teachings, everywhere teaching nowadays, everywhere. Like in this small town, so-called Kathmandu town, there are so many teachings. In one day, maybe you can attend the three to four teachings, morning there, afternoon there, in the night there. But when you go back, did you really apply them within? No. Then, just waste some time. You are not collector of news. You are not collector of Dharma teaching. You are practitioner. Practitioner in the sense of applying each and every words that you received from them. Then we call practitioner. Giving example. Jawa Gotamba. 
Jase Tome Sambo, these three are great Bodhisattva in Tibet. One time, Bhattu Rinpoche, and his disciple asked Bhattu Rinpoche, who is the best, the Bodhisattva Jaya Avatara practitioner these days in Tibet? And then Bhattu Rinpoche says, Jase Tome Sambo and Jawa Gotsangpa, these two great master are the greatest. Then the student asked, why? And he said, whatever he, whatever two of these master learned from Bodhisattva Jaya Avatara is already in their heart. Therefore they are master. Does not mean master means, must, does not mean master means who can explain like hours and hours and hours and hours. You know, does not mean they are master. Master means whatever they have learned is applied within. Make sure that I did practice, then only I can benefit others. If you are able to go through these kind of the proper system or proper stages, then you are master. That's what Padrum says. Therefore, so we have to open our mind. Openness is so important. Tight up your mind. And anything come to you is so sensitive to you. Right? And you are a very unpredictable personality. And even teaching may not be able to work with you at all. Really. So therefore, you see, if you are unable to change your basic attitude, then it's so difficult to digest whatever teaching that you have received. We are not only looking for blessing alone, we are looking for more than that. Myself, in my own case, I consider blessing means, so whatever you have learned, if you are able to apply within, and if you are experience the change, some changes, that is called the blessing of the teaching. If you are unable to change your personality, or your ego, or your negative attitude, then that means there is no blessing. Even you pray to Tara, Mahakala, Vajrayogini, Chakrasambara, but those great deities, they cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. You are seeking their blessing protection. On the basis of realization of your own true nature. Based on the change of your attitude. The base on actualizing the teachings that you receive. Then only you can get full blessing of deities. You cannot say simply, I'm right and you are wrong. On what base you say that? Legal point of view? Okay, then this should not mix with the Dharma practice. Or right? Also cannot. Dharma is something different. We are trying to ground on the ego. We are trying to dig the ground of ego and try to bring ego from the underneath and throw it away. This is our job, isn't it? So we are not trying to avoid or dispel the pain and the suffering itself. We are trying to find the cause, the origin of pain and the suffering. That's why we need more time and we need more diligence. We need to be diligent. It's, so, it's not so easy to, finding, to find the origin and the sole cause of the pain and the suffering. Working with them is not so easy. You have to fight with the anger. You have to fight with your ego. You have to fight whatever accusation with the others. Yeah? That means the state of your, so your mind is totally different. It's totally different. So you are trying to change through the Dhamma practice. This is a very severe. This is a very serious. 
Time is not waiting for us. We came alone and we go alone. Now we have a time. We have an opportunity. Teaching is there. The place for the teach practice is also there. And we can practice. Delaying, not so good. Life is very unpredictable and unstable. Under any situation, any cases, life can be gone. Not necessarily from serious illness. Although you are healthy, you can be gone at any time. Right? So therefore, it's, it's really difficult to be delayed. It's urge, Katamba Masters urge us to do it right away. This ego never gives us joy and happiness. Seemingly looks joyful, enjoyable, but not. So therefore, so in this case, Others are so precious, and I'm not precious. Others are precious. So therefore, I need to cherish. Whether he or she is kind to me or not, regardless, I should thankful. I should be thankful to you that you criticize me. Thank you for your criticize. Thank you for your accusation. Thank you for your whatever. If you are a serious practitioner, I have to be very thankful to those who criticize you. I cannot force myself, right, without reason. I have to analyze it before taking this action. I cannot pretend, I cannot show only action, say that I am good practitioner. It has to come from heart. It has to come from your realization. It has to come from your understanding and your determination. Without determination, without a definitive kind of understanding or actualization, one cannot really just simply take it. I cannot. If someone accuses me in front of me or in front of people, I can act nicely. Yes, I'm Bodhisattva. Yes, yes, thank you so much. But inside, not really. Right? When I go back in my room, maybe I will bang on a table or slam the door. I criticize back behind. But this person cannot hear, right? So, but from heart means, regardless whether you are alone or among the people, whatever situation doesn't really make changes because you're, you are determined. You are very determined with your practice. So with this determination, you are stable with your practice. Then, once you are stabilized to your practice, joy is there, happiness is there. Then the devotion is there. Then this devotion does not change at all. Without the determination, then the devotion changes, practice changes. Yes, everything will change. Therefore, determination is needed to be completed, to be perfected, your practice. Now, next. Jonam Kundu Ranjula, Toxin Yomonte Mata, Dashi Marun, Chevena, Tenta Dona Dorsho. In all actions, may I search into my mind. As soon as a delusion arises that endanger myself and others, may I firmly face and turn away them. This is the most difficult practice. In all actions, <coughs> in all actions, may I search into my mind. So you see, Kadamba masters always say that search my own mind, not others' mind. My own mind into my mind. Search into my mind. As soon as delusion arises that endanger myself and others, which is true, ego destroys my joy and others' joy. Anger destroys my joy and others' joy. 
Anger destroy your happiness and my happiness. Anger eventually destroy our ultimate joy and our ultimate destiny. Right? So therefore, when someone criticizes you in front of you, Kadamba Master says, this kind of a trick, and you should think, oh, he or she is criticizing my ego, not me. So you make separate your ego and yourself. You regard yourself as a, as a very pure person, but ego is somewhere around, so therefore you couldn't find someone, someone found it. So he or she is criticizing my ego. Then you should tell ego, did you hear what he or she said? So you should support this person and criticize ego together. I'm more powerful, he said. So then you should appreciate, thank you, criticizing my ego. But you didn't criticize me. Thank you. You you recognize me as a pure person, but the ego. So therefore, so when whoever criticizes you, you feel okay because you know that oh, it's not me. It's the ego. Yeah. So he or she criticized my ego, not me. So this is kind of a trick. Of course, actually, it's yourself. Of course, but no choice. Try to make this kind of a trick make you a little bit comfortable. Otherwise, you will not try. Therefore, this is Kadampa's trick. It's also not that high tech. Anyway, fail or achieved whatever practice must not give up our continuity. It's so important. Realizing life is not simple because of myself. Otherwise, life is so simple. Life is so simple. Really, really simple. But why life got so much complicated situation? And why there are so many confusions in my life because of my attitude? I carry this negative attitude from the beginnings of the time and never, never changed. This life is so called precious a human life. And having met up the great masters and received the teachings, still you are same. It's not good, isn't it? It's not good. And the next life? Unthinkable. So, this precious human life, why you call precious human life? You could do so many good things. That's why the precious human life. Our life is not for fighting. Our life is not for the anger. Our life is not for the jealousy. Our life is not for accusation. Our life is not for unpleasant situation. Our life lives for the purpose of cultivating joy, happiness, and ultimate victory. Life is one time or more, doesn't matter. We have to work with it. We have to work with it. You are in the retreat or you are in the city. You are in the cave or you are in the crowd spot. The location does not really make difference at all. It's your mind. It's our wisdom. It's our attitude. Attitude follows you everywhere. Whether you are alone or with your friends, doesn't really matter what situation you are, but it is following us. So therefore, you are the only one who is witness to yourself. I am witness to myself. Therefore, Buddha says, you are, your, you are the yourself enemy. You are the yourself friend, right? So, I have to be responsible with, to, to every single practice I do. I'm not expecting for others' expression. I'm not expecting others' appreciation. I'm not expecting others' thankfulness. I'm only looking for the appreciation from myself. I need to fulfill my wish 
and I need to fulfill the wishes of sentient beings, and I need to fulfill the wishes of the great masters and the Buddha. And how do you fulfill their wishes? Only way is to apply or actualize their teachings. They can see you always, and they give, they give us blessing. But the only problem is we don't see the blessing. They are like a sun and a moon. They reflect everywhere, under every nook of corner. But receive blessing or not, you experience the blessing or not, is your own judgment, your own responsibility. Therefore, I need to, I need to, I need to examine myself here, says. Otherwise, arise that endanger myself and others. So I, I firmly, I firmly face and turn away them. So immediately, don't keep your anger, don't keep your ego within you. If you keep these with you for long term, long time, they will not give you joy. More you kind to them, the more they are disgusting to you. The anger's ego never appreciate your kindness. Never. So Buddha has seen very clearly, therefore he named ultimate destroyer, anger, ego, ultimate destroyer. It is there, but difficult to walk with it. If you don't change, and who can help you to change? We cannot simply pray, make a prayer, say that, May Buddha, please bless, please Buddha, can you give me a blessing that may my ego turn away, may my anger go away. But Buddha cannot give us such a blessing. The blessing is only come from his teaching, his words, his instruction. It's so funny, it's so strange. We keep image of a Buddha, yet we never listen to his teaching. It's so funny, unbelievable. And we keep his teaching, 98 volumes in the altar, and a huge image, the gigantic size of a Buddha, gold, silver, precious, the diamond, whatever, you put it in the altar, and you do prostration, you light up lamps, and you pray, but your attitude is never changed. What for? It's what for? It's sad. It's very sad. And it's most stupid. I'm sorry to say that, but in the teaching you have to be very direct. Particularly, this is Kadampa teaching. So, it's, it, it is like that, you know, it is like that. So therefore, no point to keep image of a Buddha, tankas, mandalas, whatever. If you are unable to change your attitude, if you keep this negative attitude within you always, regardless you receive teaching or not, regardless you do practice or not, if you are failed to walk with your ego and your negative attitude, then better not be Buddhist. Better not be Buddhist. It's not good image in the world of Buddha Dhamma. Therefore, my, our responsibility is to fight, to work. We don't fight with others. We fight our ego. I fight my anger. Make sure that I win and the anger lose. Anger lose. Ego lose. If you are able to do that, you are ultimate. You are, you are ultimate the winner. And uh, you have gained ultimate victory. Yes? So therefore, must see the reality. No? Have to open your mind and a wisdom to see the, what is actually right, what is actually wrong. Not 
at the only uh, level of surface, but much more into the deeper level of the, re the reality. If you pay more attention, and eventually slowly, and you can see more clearer, more clearer. That is the fact. So therefore, recognition is so important. When anger arises, apply recognition. Fail recognition, and then you cannot apply antidote. You cannot apply the methods or remedy. So, recognition leads the rest of the practices. Recognition. Recognizing the ego. Recognizing, recognizing the anger, disturbing emotion. And then walk with it. Each and every time when we meet up, all these kind of things, each and every time when we face such a situation, one must not blame on others immediately. Rest and calm and think carefully. Think carefully. Yeah? Then they follow the instruction. The teachings are not from my mouth. The teachings from the great masters. Why I am saying great? Because they have experienced. They are the ultimate master. And they are mastered in these teachings. These teachings. They have actualized. So each and every word given by them is their own experience and realization. So they, this teaching has full of a blessing. If you apply, it works so easily, so simply. It's not as difficult as what you think intellectually. Literally, intellectually, conceptually, yes, you can think everything, but it's difficult, it will never work with you. So therefore experience, actualize, bring it into, within. Make sure whatever words, instruction that you have seen, the receive is true. You can prove, we have to prove, the proof by practice. Meditate, contemplate, learn seriously. It's not simple. Just say, oh, it's amazing. If you say amazing, this will not work with you. It is amazing, true, yes. It is amazing. They did and we couldn't. It is amazing because of the amazing. So they did it, we couldn't. If you apply it and you can do like the Buddhas. Teaching is for that purpose. The recitation of mantra is for that purpose. So our daily life, in practice, our responsibility is to be checked. Attitude. Your mental attitude can be seen yourself. Nobody can judge it. In six, in uh, seven point of mind training, by Yishi Doji says there are two witnesses. One is other. Other one is self. Among these two, the best is self. Others can be seen wrongly, right? It's so easy. You are right, you are wrong, you are doing good, you are doing right, you are doing wrong, you are doing not good. Easy, very easy. But self is so difficult to recognize my own fault and mistake, to recognize my own the positivities and my own quality and my own study, my own meditation, to recognize them. And correcting it, we have to correct right and wrong. Nobody can correct you. We have to correct through applying those precious teachings. Teachings are existed. But when you say the teaching is so blessed, teaching is so precious, how do you know it's precious? This means you are proving, you have to prove, right? So prove through experience. Prove through actualize them. Make sure these words are true. So you have to be, I have to be truthful to myself. I, I have to be truthful. The truth, be truthful through the learning, through actualizing. So therefore, whatever negativities, whatever like disturbing emotion arises, and don't keep it, immediately walk with it. He said that. The friendly face and turn away them. Okay, so I live here for this morning and we will continue in the afternoon. Thank you so much.